Howdy folks, Paul here. I've finally completed my last documentary, my latest one. Uh, this one on development of behavior in largemouth bass. And now that it's off my plate, I can get back to some more regular fishing focused content. Uh, and I can actually get some fishing in <laughs> and take you along with me. So we're here in midsummer. Uh, and on this particular outing, I decided to do a video fishing journal on fishing dense summer vegetation, heavily vegetated waters. Dense vegetation can make for pretty challenging, even frustrating fishing, both in finding the bass and in getting a lure to them. And we're going to do our fishing on or near the surface. It's just plain fun. Fishing topwater on dense vegetation requires bass that are willing to come up. They may already be up, as in bass holding right under the surface mats of vegetation, um, or, or those fish that are riding high, usually hunting surface-feeding bluegills in, in that vegetation, or hunting dragonflies. If they're not willing to come up, they must be called up. And this is the least consistent scenario, uh, most often resulting in uh, random catches, uh, a fish here and there rather than part of some wider pattern uh, that we can find. The alternative when faced with random catches may be to change tactics altogether and go down into that slop for them. Uh, and we'll hit this type of fishing in another outing. In this fishing, there's a lot of searching involved. In our case, we're fishing small waters, uh, ponds in this case, uh, but we'll be covering water too by visiting a number of ponds uh, that happen to be close together. And we're doing our fishing from the bank today, and that's a nice way to, to hit a bunch of small waters um, on foot. I, I still love bank fishing. The first thing I do when assessing summer slop water is to just glance at them. And that's essentially do a drive-by. What I'm looking for is the right amount of types and forms of vegetation. Solid beds of milfoil or coontail can make the hunting hard for both we anglers and for the bass. Bass need room to hunt. Research looking at habitat structure in largemouth bass has shown that around 30% vegetated cover is ideal. We need our baits to be seen and able to be caught by those bass. Prey, uh, sunfishes in particular, are escape artists in dense cover. And the bass know this. So, to make efficient use of their energy in making kills, bass must get themselves into an advantageous position. And this is exactly what they're looking for. Kill opportunities. So why not choose a wide open pond with no cover at all? <laughs> uh, th the swimming pool. You can, but you'll most likely need to fish in a very different way, usually breaking out the finesse tackle and praying for clouds. Um, that clear open water can be a real challenge. Lures shouldn't be seen by, by the fish too well. Remember, lures are not real prey. Lures seen over a distance can give too many wrong signals. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, what educated fish learn to discern compared to naive fish that have never seen lures. Cover of any sort can break up um, or obscure a lure's inappropriate signals. Uh, a now you see it, now you don't sort of thing uh, that forces a reaction from the fish that it happens to be in the right position to make a kill on that prey-like object that they get a, just a glance at. Another thing that affects a fish's willingness to strike is whether they're feeding at the moment we happen to be to stand in their casting. Feeding fish are vulnerable fish. Uh, this is another good reason that we'll be covering water. We, too, are searching for those kill opportunities, okay, just like the bass are. The best scenario is what I call a carnage zone, <laughs> an area, uh, often small, where fired-up bass 
and vulnerable prey come together. Um, and this is a, a this zone occurs in space and time. And often, as I said, it's a, it can be a small space and a short window of time. Um, other times, there are places and ponds that are continual carnage zones, or at least you can expect them to happen there. It's just the way the structural layout of the water body is. So in our search, we are trying to entice fish, call them up, uh, and at the same time, we are watching for feeding bass, and hopefully a carnage zone. <laughs> I'm always looking for those. Cover density and form plays a big role in this. Bass, again, need room to hunt, and that's more room than a sunfish needs. Okay, so gap sizes um, or proper breaks in the cover matter a lot. This is in part why diverse structure and cover is so important to look for. First, the more nooks and crannies, the more space there is for all those links in the food chain. And secondly, the size of those breaks must be penetrable by hunting bass. When I'm doing my pond drive-bys, I'm looking for breaks in all that vegetation. Breaks exist in many forms, but they all do the same things. Uh, they create spaces for living things to make their livings in, uh, give larger predators room to hunt, and they serve to obscure the fakeness that's inherent in our lures. The main weed types in my ponds are, and pretty much in this order, milfoil, Eurasian milfoil, um, Elodea, and Coontail. All three grow in dense beds. Uh, looking out over a pond covered over with weeds, one might think, oh, you know, I, I can't wait to throw a frog out there. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> but the problem with these weed types, uh, milfoil and coontail especially, is that it often grows dense from the ground up. Therefore, not producing a surface mat with open water beneath. No room for bass to hunt or find our lures effectively. It can be tough for us to drum up fish that either aren't looking where we're throwing our lures, <laughs> okay? And we can't see most of those breaks within those dense beds from the surface. So when topwater fishing for them, uh, trying to bring them up, we're looking at pockets in the weed beds, pockets that we can see. Each pocket in such cover represents only a small piece of real estate. So that's why we've got to cover a lot of water and uh, really just end up hitting a lot of pockets. Okay, that's the locational stuff. Uh, next is timing, the when that goes with the where. Bass are expert at recognizing and anticipating the whens as well as the wheres. So we have to rely a lot on the activity level of those fish. It can be tough to try to drum fish up that aren't very motivated to chase. Uh, bass may be willing to eat at almost any time, um, although they, they definitely do sleep. Uh, but sometimes, and we're talking conditions and circumstances here, are better than others. <laughs> and when those stars align, the bass rouse. And that's uh, the position we want to be in as well. So conditions can stack things in our favor. Uh, I was pleased with the deep overcast that we had for, for much of this outing. Bass have an advantage over bluegill prey, uh, fish prey in particular, um, under low light. Uh, and, and bass could be seen in herds surging after bluegills. Um, you could hear breaks out there uh, during, during these dark periods. All right. I've got movement. I've got, uh, so these dark clouds have rolled in and I can hear bass busting. Oh, did you see that bust out there? Man. So here's my top water surface slop lineup. Uh, frogs, uh, so-called frogs, um, in my mind, they, they more often mimic bluegills than actual frogs. Bluegills that are working up under uh, the surface mats and, and uh, just basically feeding on insects along the surface. Weedless spoons, uh, that's an old-time forgotten bait, but they're excellent. 
Um, they work really well. Spinner baits, and this includes various buzzers, um, buzz baits. Um, and then uh, worms and flukes, which are more or less uh, lump. Swimming a worm, a ribbon tail worm, is a, just a dynamite way to catch fish, uh, to catch bass. And then I'll often use a fluke for a follow-up. If you get a bust, like on a frog, and he misses, and that's not uncommon, uh, follow up with a fluke, and um, often you can, you can pick them off. Here are some of my favorites, um, but there are many others out there as well. Um, quite frankly, if you have a roused fish in front of you uh, with room to kill, the exact lure uh, can matter little, uh, providing it's weedless. Uh, this is especially so um, on surface mats. Uh, a block of wood dragged over a mat can elicit hellbent blow-ups. Okay, that should get us off the ground. Let's get out there, hit the slop with uh, a bunch of different weedless surface lures. Um, oh, and apologies uh, for some sloppy camera work here and there. Um, shaking off some rust here after uh, working so long on, on that documentary. Uh, most painfully, with the missed frog bites, it's so easy to do. Um, you gotta wait. <laughs> Just give them time to inhale it and crush it. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. Let's hit the water. Let's fish. I want to feel that point. And I want to make sure first it's sharp. Yeah, I got a point. And then I'm less worried about spooking fish right now. It being this dark and cloudy and muggy. Oh, I... That was fun. He saw that coming through the air and took it the second it touched down. Um, he's spent the month of June and into July hunting dragonflies on the surface. I'll try to let you see. In fact, there is a dead dragonfly on the water right there. It's kind of fun. So they're definitely watching things in the air, um, especially smaller fish. Um, I've had mature fish that, that hunt dragonflies too, but um, little guys like this are prime dragonfly hunters. They're definitely watching things in the air, um, especially smaller fish. Um, I've had mature fish that, that hunt dragonflies too, but um, little guys like this are prime dragonfly hunters. All right, little fella. 11 incher, 10 and a half. Whoa! <laughs> you see that? <laughs> so I want to check the body condition of these fish. Those two fish were small, but they weren't runt skinny. Oh, that's, there we go. Out the way it came in. All right, we're gonna fan cast just a little here. And we're gonna swim it. Just swim it. I should be coming into bass here. There will be bass here, whether I can get them. So I let the worm fall. 
and just let the worm fall. Got another little sub-adult. Hey, come back here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. All right. That's how it went in. Yep. Little dark water bass. Not bad condition for summer. Well, I'm gonna stay swimming. There's one, got him. <laughs> you see him come a running? That's what we're looking for. Aggressive fish on the top. So I could have forced it out the way I thought it went in, but it came in actually from this angle. And, if, and you can see this, this little hook wound right there is oblong, and that's the angle it came in, and that's the one it's going to back out on. All right, honey. All right, this stuff, I suspect, is too shallow. No. But, it may not be. Well, and it isn't. <laughs> Underneath the, come on, get him out of there. Underneath the uh, smart weed. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Got my own in, Papa. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Not too shallow. Honey, gotta watch those eyes. And there it goes, it came right out. It's that mashed on barb. I push down and the barb tucks behind the, the bend of the hook and it comes out. It's how you would pull it out of your own finger. There's a beautiful 15er in nice shape, real nice condition. Yep. There you go, hon. All right. Not the first time I've seen uh, fish in this, bass in this smartweed. Uh, and what it is, it's, it's like a little cage of brush. It's almost like brush, but it's vegetation. Um, it holds bluegills and it's huntable. I can see bluegills in front of me. Let's see if we can't find another. Missed it. Come on.
there's one. Dark slop water fish, um, healthy uh, food in there. Actually, I think there's a bulge there. Look at that. Um, yep, healthy. All right, you're growing. There you go. Whoa, I got whacked out there on the fall. Oh, it feels like a good fish. I'm gonna move over, well over, get out of trouble here. Oh. I hope I didn't foul a carp or something. Oh, nope. big <laughs> just covered up in stuff oh no oh, good thing it's getting serious now oh you're hooked on top of the head whoa right behind the eye oh Whew. yep you got a little food in your belly all right Lively thing. All right, dude. All right, putting the camera back on. I got a strike. Missed him. Or he missed me. I don't think I gave him the time either. Put the cameras back on because I might. There might be more than one bass here. There will be, but. So, here's the game plan, and that's to call fish up. Um, how possible is that? How much are we relying on their activity level? Uh, I would say it's a huge percentage of the game. why it pays to cover water and watch those conditions. I feel like when this really clouds up even heavier, which we're just about there. I'll have no excuses. I can either call them up or find them. And that's what it's going to be, a little of both. It's what it's already been. Here comes a bass. Oh, he was too little. That was fun. He was too little to take that. He came a-running from these cattails. We're going to fire off to that side. He came for it and stopped. So now I'm in position. Let's make a shorter cast. Swim to him. Are you curious, buddy? Or are you done with this thing? <laughs> now he's... All right. 
I should have a fluke rigged up. I think I'm gonna do it. Fluke with a slightly weighted belly. And I'm not rigged straight, darn it. You really gotta nail these guys straight. There we go. Skin hook it. I wanna feel that point. Whoa! And there's a bass. I think that's the same one. It's about the same size, too. <laughs> hey, this guy's fat. Come on. Sorry about that. Man, I really ripped his uh, pre-max. That one will heal, but uh, it's the risk of big hooks on these little guys. So look at this. There is food in there. Now, are you a dragonfly hunter? Those dragonflies, maybe a little bluegill or two? Adios, little fella. Here comes a bass. Missed it twice. Okay, missed it again. Stand over a little closer. Perfect. Swim toward it. Swim on in and hang out. I felt him run away with it. I felt the weight. I felt the weight. We'll try. Holy moly, do you see that? And I felt him too, no hookup. That's the second good fish that I've actually felt and got no hooks in. All right. Let's see if anybody's chasing in the rain. They're not going to see the disturbance of my bait now as easily. All right, we'll try it. A slow buzz bait if I can get it out there. There we go. That answers my question. Come on up and out of there. Give me a tiny bit more line there, honey. Ugh. OK. 
Okay. That's a little bit better. There. See, I slipped. That just fell out when I came the right direction, and that is um, out the way it came in. This is the best uh, broken water, broken cover spinner bait there ever was. And I say was because they don't make it anymore. And I've written them several times, Strike King. And they say, no, we're not planning on bringing that one back. There's this 16er. Yeah. Very dark green and yellow. All right, you're in pretty good shape. You're in pretty good shape. And away you go. There's one again, same spot. You hear that drag? That was a Whoa, it was a good jump. We're not going to get to see that one. Oh. Whoa, speedy thing. Speedy, speedy. I think I was dragging through some wood or something. All right, let's see if we can get you. Well, there we go. All right, let's see about getting this hook out. We're at a double hook in there. There it is. There's one. Wrapped up. Now let's find out how you took this. Wow, you took it cross-jawed. Holy moly. Uh-oh. Where does it go in? Oh, I see. Wow. Wow, this is a toughie. These have big barbs, and I've knocked the barb down quite a bit, filed it down. Wow, she took a cross-bladed is what she did. I'm going to put this in her mouth. Yeah, shoot. All right, let's see what we can do with her. There it is. All right, we just had to figure that out. She took it from the side. She's probably push, pushing 17. Not quite. And some are thin, but not bad. Not bad at all. They're getting fed. So they're growing. There you go, sweet pea. Had a good jump out of that fish. Didn't get to see it. Okay, get that. There's one. My word, that's three in a row in this spot. Uh, keep coming. Oh. It's a heavy fish anyway, or it's got some belly on him. Oh yeah, very nice. About the same, a little heavier. Yeah, definitely heavier. Oh, oh, ho, ho. yep. Each one's getting just a little bit bigger. Yeah, yes, sir. Oh. Nice. 
the corner go whoa honey honey oh i lost her <laughs> well at least we got to look at her <laughs> man she was strong <sighs> all right here's what we're gonna do <laughs> let me get that swim jig again rain's lightened up it may not be big enough for him but uh I don't want to alternate shots. All right. So what we're going to do is try the swim jig again. Right where I was catching those guys. Okay, it's shallow in there. Accelerations get those tails flapping. Okay, not enough of a trigger. So, what's going on here? I'll tell you what's going on here, and that's bluegills. <laughs> uh, that have something to eat here, and the bass are right on them. All right, let's disturb the surface some with this jig, I guess. I'm not sure if it's making enough of a disturbance, but... Interesting here is the swim jig is not getting bites. All right, let's try that spinner bait back in there. They're looking for a bigger disturbance. It's just plain has a better trigger. spot come on pick up your speed there it is there it is Let's pull that wake this is a perfect amount of broken cover here there's one I saw him come up from the shore right from the shoreline he came against the shoreline where I wanted to throw that jig. I didn't quite get it there. Hey man, don't jump out of my hands again. This one's on the thin side. Thin summer bass. Yep. Okay, there's bluegills right in there. Right in this smart weed. Quite a few and good sized ones. We're gonna pitch our spinner bait a bit further into this to this corner. There's a fish. Whoa. Big. All right, where are you hooked? 
There you go. Oh man, come on. <laughs> There's a tendon right there. Oh, hmm. The mash down barb is actually it's a tension too. There it is. There is a little dark, little dark swampy bass, swamp bass. <laughs> Into the smart weed you go. There's one, not a big one, right on the edge of the weeds. Come on, we'll pull it. Twelver. All right, how did you get hooked, buddy? Where's that? Oh man. There we go. There's one. <laughs> well, here we go again. Ooh, just on the corner there. There we go. Dark water bass. Right in the corner. And out the way it came in. It was you know, it was like hard to get out. Turn it in like this, backs right out. All right, honey. Adios, so.